Das ist sehr gut, meine Freunde, sehr gut. <lacht> sehr schön. Sehr schön, scheiße schön. <lacht> Cool, here we go. Hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and today on the Rock and Roll Podcast, we have a journey to us who is making a appearance back on the couch because we chatted a couple of years ago, Alex, when you had the last Stellar release, and as, as if you guys couldn't do it any better, you figured out how to do it better, not to downplay what you guys did last time at all, but... Uh, definitely a killer release we're going to chat about here. It is a new album called Haunted Minds, which was released on November 20th via Wormhole Death. And right now I'm being joined again by Alex on the couch to share some more information about what the band has been up to as well as this stellar release. So, Alex, welcome back to the show. Nice to be back again on your show. <laughs> Hello, everyone. From Not from the couch, but from my studio. <laughs> That's right, from the studio. Well, one day, you know, post-pandemic, it'd be really nice to have, I don't know, maybe I travel around or whatever, but uh, some kind of an actual couch-type uh, setup. Yeah, everyone gets a little bit of a couch potato these days, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> it's, yeah. the, the hero of the pandemic is a couch potato, I tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but we we are we were able to use this time uh, and very creatively because we are yeah actually we we've planned this album a long time ago and already finished this quite when the pandemic started so uh, yeah we could use this time very effectively. Well, and that brings us to to me uh, brings a great question, Alex, because you mentioned that 2019 uh, was a very exciting year. The beginning of 2020 was a very exciting year until the pandemic happened. And then just now you had mentioned that you guys were uh, very productive uh, during this time. So if you wouldn't mind, take us through, because the last time we chatted was 2018. What have the last couple of years looked like? And don't worry about time. You know, take, a, take us through the story. Uh, and also as well, I'm trying to remember, were you guys signed to Wormhole Death? Uh, before or is that something that's happened in the last couple of years that yeah that happened happened in the last year and uh, we talked to each other after after our previous release tales of the grotesque uh, in summer 2018 and uh, uh, the year ended with not so great years to us because our uh, former lead singer oliver decided uh, to quit the band due to some personal reasons and um, which is also, and, uh, or um, every time it's very sad to lose a guy, which which we've worked for very many couple of years with him. Uh, so that was uh, some sad, sad thing in the end of 2018. But um, yeah, because I, I I did also the lead uh, vocals on the first albums and never stopped singing and also developing my voice through the last years. Uh, we decided, okay, so let's go on with with me on on the vocal side, on the lead vocal side. So it was no not uh, very uh, long uh, period with with not having a singer. So that we can straight go ahead, and uh, so we went on with my voice. And then we've got um, uh, our first European uh, tour in 2019, supporting the um, symphonic um, band, uh, the, the Japanese symphonic band Jupiter. Uh, for one week we've toured and for a first time in France and also in, in the UK in London. It was uh, very exciting to us to tour with them on such a European tour. And um, yeah, it, it went on um, that we've also got the chance to, to go on tour with Lordi, <laughs> the monster act uh, Lordi from Finland, also um, supporting some shows on their European tour. And that was uh, in, early in 2020. Um, and end of February, beginning of uh, March, when there is also, yeah, the pandemic grew up a little bit in Italy. We saw that and uh, also they had to cancel some shows in uh, in, in North, Northern Italy. It, we weren't affected. We've started in, in France and Spain had some very, very cool uh, days uh, on tour with Lordi and first time in Madrid and Barcelona, for example, and then returned home. And two weeks after, uh, the city became one of the hotspots in Europe. It was very tough to see and also very sad, of course, for this uh, for the regions and the cities. But um, yeah, for us, it was a very, very exciting experience. And yeah. Then, uh, <laughs> very, very happened a lot. Uh, during the last two years for us. Mm -hmm. 
So many things to chat about there. You mentioned uh, first European tour in 2019 there, uh, France and the UK, and then in early 2020 supporting Laurie. The, and it sounded like you guys went significantly far uh, all the way down to Spain, um, first time in Madrid and Barcelona. How did that change your guys' uh, perception of, I don't know, what you guys are doing as a metal band, touring around the different countries, seeing the crowds, um, seeing how your music is taken in different cultures that yeah it was it's quite a new experience to us to to because every yeah you know every city or every every the audience in every city or every region is a little bit different um uh yeah sometimes a little bit uh, enthusiastic more enthusiastic than in germany especially in the northern part of germany <laughs> people are very <laughs> yeah they they like the music, but they don't show it. Let's let's call it like that. Like that. Um, although that we, sounds, we are uh, we are from northern Germany, so it's not not a very uh, yeah uh, strange thing to us. But uh, yeah, it, it was quite <laughs> quite cool to see uh, people uh, shouting and dancing uh, in front of the stage in in Spain, and they were so happy to to listen to the music. And um, yeah, it, it's quite an, a very cool experience to to. To have, uh, yeah, to be on tour. <laughs> mm-hmm. I heard a joke once, and I I didn't know really the validity of it or how true it is. But you, since you mentioned that, I I remembered the joke that uh, when you tell a German a joke, he'll laugh later in the middle of the house is looking. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 a little bit like, but that's also that depends on 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 the area. For there are, uh, for example, in in the area of the, in the Rhine area. They they are very very uh, cool people and very open minded and also very very funny guys are there and of course we are also very funny here in northern Germany but it's different <laughs> style of uh, different style of comedy maybe uh, yeah yeah very 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 true now uh, something you guys had mentioned or that you had mentioned was uh, signing to Wormhole Death within that time to so take us through that how did Wormhole Death get on board um, and how has that experience gone for you guys. Uh, I think that was uh, at the end of or mid or end of 2019 when we planned our new album Haunted Minds, and um, yeah, for for several reasons, uh, our former label doesn't want to do another release, and so yeah, we were looking for some other partners, and with the help of our booking agency. Um, yeah, we, we found some some several interested labels and Wormhole Death was, was one of, of them. And so we spoke to them and we, we found that they were very... I, I had the feeling that that um, the owner was not only interested in, in the business side or the very the, only the numbers, but it seems to me that he was very, very interested in, in our kind of music and band. And, and so we decided, okay, let's let's go on with, with Wormhole. And then we've decided to to publish and release the first uh, album together uh, 2020 was yeah that's that's the story okay so then it was already planned to release the album in 2020 um i guess my question alex is with regard to the way the year has gone was it planned to be released in november or has the year caused you guys to re uh configure the marketing plan Mm, no, uh, we had we had finished the songs in uh, end of uh, 2019 when we we started the discussions with Wormhole. So it was quite clear that we could finish uh, the recording and the whole album production in 2020. Uh, then came this Lordy tour, of course, which uh, we have to postpone some recordings. But um, so we I think we finished the the whole recording process and mixing and so in in. April, around about that April, beginning of May, and so then it was a kind of standard marketing plan. So uh, we talked to to uh, Wormhole when we should uh, we could release this with uh, the the time period of time for marketing, and we decided we can do it in 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 autumn, and then it became it became uh, November. Um, yeah, well, I mean, November is autumn for a lot of places here in Canada. <clears throat> it's been winter for like at least a month now, probably two months. Uh, <laughs> you, you you leave out, you just jump from summer to winter, or how do I? If we even get summer, summer in Canada, ah, okay. is, 
Yeah, it's kind of like, wait a minute, was that spring? Hold on a second, is this summer? And then you just immediately feel like you got to hold on for dear life. Uh, and then next thing you know, the wind changes and boom, you're in, you know, a meter of snow, if not more, minus okay, 20. We are far from that here in Germany, maybe also due to some climate change, but the last summers were so fucking hot. Sorry. <laughs> um, for weeks, like it, it's a little bit like the Mediterranean climate for for a couple of weeks here. So it's very, yeah. But it's it's also okay. So we are at least we have a we have a autumn now and uh, winter. But winter with, without snow, it's very unlikely to have snow here in northern Germany. Wow. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, you know the Canadian answer to, to global warming, right? Yeah, maybe. It sounds nice. Bring it on. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of minus 40 for the winter, maybe it'll be, you know, minus 20 or something. Uh, who knows? Yeah, okay. Okay, I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have some we could uh, uh, some we have producer of, of of Italian red wine here in Germany now. Twenty years really? ago, it wasn't possible to do that, but now. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Very interesting. So then, it's no. Is it still Italian? It, that's a good question because in California, for example, or even here in Canada, uh, we have taken grape varietals from other parts of the world and brought them here and have grown them here and so then technically is it actually a california chardonnay or is it actually a bc gewurztraminer for example uh there's a gewurztraminer here uh from british columbia that my wife and i absolutely love we get it all the time and i kind of think it's funny is it actually a gewurztraminer but of course it is but um so that's kind of the interesting thing it starts to take on its own thing so italian grape varietals are now being grown in Germany, are they have they become Germanized yet? Kind of like how you know Chardonnay became Californiaized, or the Gewurztraminer from British Columbia became Canadianized. Uh, good question. I'm I'm not such an, a wine expert, so it was just a uh, kind of example how things change here. So I I just know that it happened that uh, yeah the kind of wine has changed. There was where there was wine produced here in Germany since the Romans were uh, yeah, at the Rhine area. Uh, but I know that uh, it wasn't that, that such tasteful maybe, or they had other sorts of, of grapes here. But uh, in the last 10, 15 years, it changed a bit. Mm -hmm. But I, I, of course, I'm not an expert to be, to be true. To be. I know. You're an expert on Eternatus, baby. And take us through this album because you guys said you had finished doing the writing by 2019 uh you guys did the recording uh it sounds like you were saying unless i misheard alex that you did the recording the mixing and the mastering or, or am i wrong i yeah I, I did the recording and uh yeah the mixing because i'm also working as an as an engineer um the last step the mastering i always uh give to some some specialist in mastering for several reasons, because first of all, I'm not a special spe specialist in mastering, and, and the other thing, secondly, is that it's also good uh, to have a second pair of ears for for a production and not to do everything by yourself. Um, so I'm like like on the on the album before we we did this with a, an, a guy in Amsterdam, with, which has a special mark uh, a mastering studio. And it's very easy and very cool uh, to work with him. Mm -hmm. Okay, now take us through this record. What did you guys aim to compile? What is the story behind the record if there is a concept or a theme? Uh, 11 tracks? Why not 12 tracks? Why not 10 tracks? Why 11 tracks? There's so many questions I have here. Alex, because we have we have like tracks like Haunted Minds. Uh, the artwork, it looks like the heart is gutted out. Uh, Fountain of Youth. Uh, we've got so many, the birthmark. What? So many elusive track titles. What is this album, Haunted Minds, that you have birthed to the world? Okay, so many questions. Um, <laughs> um, okay, first of all, I have to mention, I think we already spoke about uh, that issue on the last um, album, Tales of the Grotesque, that we 
we always have an overall yeah topic or an overall uh, concept with our albums we always rely on um stories from from ancient authors uh yeah first of all from from north american uh, writers of of short stories like edgar allan poe at least we've we've got inspired by edgar allan poe for our uh, previous two albums um work worked with his short stories some poems with him <clears throat> and um but i i thought um I had uh, done everything with Poe, which which I which was interesting to me, and and I, I've used all the stories which which fit to our music. So I was looking to to some other inspiration, found some uh, some other um, author, which was also a companion from Edgar Allan Poe, and that is um, Nathaniel Hawthorne, also uh, an author from the 19th century, um, living close or very near and close to to Edgar Allan Poe, and also was a writer of some some kind of gothic, little bit horror elements, uh, uh, romantic stories like that. And so I've, I've chosen uh, nine stories from, from him, which I used to this album. And some of them really were exact. And for example, the birthmark was is exact the story named the birthmark, but there were also some other st stories I used for this, for this current album. So I think that was at least one or two answers to your questions. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It was. I, I apologize for rapid firing questions <laughs> at you, um, but I definitely remember that from Tales of the Grotesque because I said, probably asked a question like, "What are the tales of the grotesque?" and and you said, "Well, they're they're actual tales," you know. Um, so it, it's interesting to to have that come in, and so I'm speculating haunted minds then is uh, the minds of some of these authors. Um, it's a little bit more difficult be talking about this album title because also, as you mentioned, our last song, A Ballad, is called My Haunted Mind. Uh, this story re relies on the short story, The Haunted Mind. <laughs> I, I slightly changed it because, yeah, it, it fits better to, to the words we used for, for the lyrics. And... Um, and I thought it would it's a great ending of 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 the album, but I don't want wanted to use this um the single song title my haunted mind as as an album title because i I thought that the album title should more reflect and refer to to all the songs on uh, on the album, not just to the last one. so I, I also yeah changed it a little bit into just haunted minds because i think that's that's what it most of the stories they are they are about um people uh in in personal conflicts or, or broken souls uh, also or, or people um struggling to find the meaning of life for example and so i, I thought that yeah just haunted minds um tells tells it best which is mm -hmm. all about the whole album <laughs> yeah Excellent stuff. And for anybody out there who is unfamiliar, Nathaniel Hawthorne, more than likely you've heard of the Scarlet Letter. And the Scarlet Letter was written by uh, Nathaniel Hawthorne, which is a, a twisted romance novel. <laughs> I think that's one of his famous stories, or it's more it's more a, a novel than a short story. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I didn't use this for one of... I only used his short stories to our uh, okay. album. Yeah. Um, something else that comes to mind, just because I've always been fascinated with this particular time period in literature, uh, late 19th century, or just pretty much all, all the 19th century, um, especially like Dostoevsky, Gogol, uh, Goethe, um, obviously Poe, Hawthorne, quite a few authors where it just seemed, I don't know, the coolest thing in the world to just have a haunted mind. Uh, sorry, what, what was the question behind? I don't think it was a question. I think I was oh, okay. just sharing. Yeah, just sharing okay. with you, you know, uh, a mutual love. And if you could, you know, maybe write something related to a Dostoevsky short story or a, a Gogol short story or a Gucci short story, you know, that that could work. Uh, well, I haven't decided how to, to go on for the next album, but uh, yeah, we'll see what what comes into my, my mind and what, what inspires me next yeah. Now, with regard to some of these tracks, I noticed you guys have a couple of guest musicians, and one of them uh, that was a single is The Ring with Glenn Drover on it. Um, take us through that. How did Glenn get involved? Um, yeah, that, that became 
Well, it, it happens uh, from from the another guest musician, which is Henning Basse, from who also joined us on one of our songs as a guest uh, lead singer and. Um, Henning is a great singer, formerly uh, the lead singer of, of Metallium and Firewind, for example, and uh, who's also uh, my, my um, vocal coach for a couple of years. And, and he was also the, the vocal producer for our last albums. Um, so we've worked with him um, yeah, in, in, the, in the process of, of recording and, and decided now to, that we would like to do a song with him together. But uh, that was just the beginning of the story to, to Glenn, Glenn Drover because I spoke to Henning that I also wanted to have, um, or I, I thought about having uh, having a guest uh, guitarist playing a, a guest solo part on one of our songs, and I, I, I talked to him if, if he knows some some uh, some some cool uh, guitar players because he he are from from his whole. Music life, he he knows so so many uh, great musicians, and I thought he, maybe he would suggest some German metal guitarists or so. But then he came up with with Glenn Drover, uh, a very famous Canadian, uh, uh, yeah, metal guitarist. And I said, well, seriously, we're talking about Glenn? Yeah, yeah, sure, I know him <laughs> from uh, some collaborations with they they had in the past, and uh, yeah, so he. Yeah, uh, uh, gave me or he made this contact with Glenn, and and we we exchanged some some emails about yeah, discussing what what we would like to do, and and presented him a song, and so he said yeah he's fine with that he would like to do it, and uh, yeah that was uh, the story behind uh, Glenn and his his appearance on our album. Mm hmm. Very cool. Now something else I'm noticing here is there's a couple of music videos, and I believe a lyric video. Um, for the tracks, we have got The Ring, Fountain of Youth, and The Birthmark. Uh, so given all of the COVID restrictions, did you guys do these music videos carefully during restriction, or were they done beforehand? How did the music videos get made? Um, now we had the chance to shoot these in summer, where uh, the, the whole pandemic situation was very, very low, at least here in Germany. We've had some some kind of a first wave in in March and April, but com compared to other countries, European countries like like Northern Italy or Spain or, or also the UK, where we had uh, our numbers were quite quite good and not not so we were not so heavy affected and and also this uh, wave uh, was reduced very 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 good and so in summer it was we always had we almost had a normal life here it was very just just very few restrictions and um so in summer we we've had the chance to to shoot the videos um also no, not very tough to to shoot the videos mm -hmm. okay very cool well alex we've chatted about a few tracks from the album we've chatted about the album as a whole uh we chatted about the last couple of years for you guys um, signing to Wormhole Death, uh, touring around Europe, taking a bit of a break, uh, having some Italian wine uh, in Germany, which is fantastic. Uh, next will be coming gelato, pizza, maybe, who knows? And um, yeah, is there anything that I missed that you wanted to chat about, Alex? Uh, I wish I could tell you about an upcoming tour, but of course it's it's not possible at at the moment. Um, we have to wait how how everything goes on for for the whole life situation. Maybe we can start in in summer. Who knows? Um, yeah, but so we have uh, at, at this time we are very happy to have these videos released. Uh, looking forward for for the whole uh, re reactions from from the fans and how they how they react to the new songs. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Well then, Alex, I wanted to thank you for coming on to the Rock Metal Podcast today. Uh, so, uh, John, again, thank you very much for having us in your in your show, and maybe we can talk uh, next time when there's something to tell. Mm hmm.